thought it was good practice tonight. And uh, you know, again, we've had we've had two good weeks of practice, and hopefully we're improving. And uh, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be a good game for Saturday in terms of seeing you know where we are uh, since we you know left off last week. So, but been pleased, and uh, still got a little work to do before we play. Uh, but uh, overall, I think uh, with one more practice in the week is a good week. Fourth quarter of the season has been a consistent struggle. What has led to the struggle both offensively and defensively in that final quarter? Well, you know, I think it all comes down to execution. You know, if you look at the first three quarters in just about every game, uh, you know, it's been very competitive, and, and we just you know, we haven't been able to finish down the down the road. You know, and uh, you know, we understand that, and uh, got to execute much better on all sides of the ball. In the fourth quarter, if we're going to win games, you got to finish them down the stretch, and I think it's obvious that you know that's been something that we haven't you know, haven't been able to do. So uh, again, I think our guys understand the urgency of finishing in the fourth quarter. Uh, it's it's simply execution. I mean, that's what it is. And uh, you know, you can execute all you want in the first three quarters, and if you can't finish the game in the fourth right now, it's going to be the same result. So uh, you know, we just got to again really concentrate, and focus, and, and you know we have to. Eliminate mistakes in the fourth quarter. How much is that kind of? I, mean, I know you're a coach. Obviously, it takes great pride in finishing games in the fourth quarter and not be able to do that four straight games. How much is that kind of frustrating for you? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously it's frustrating anytime you you know you don't play as well as you'd like to. Certainly in the fourth quarter to finish games, and that's kind of been our our mo. You know, since we've been here, we've been able to you know finish the games in the fourth quarter. So again, just something that you know we're trying to address and trying to improve. That. With an extra week to prepare for this game, did you do anything different than a normal Wednesday practice? Uh, tonight, you're talking about right. No, tonight was a normal Wednesday practice, and, and uh, you know, we, we try to stay on schedule with you know doing everything the same as much as we can. So tonight was no no different. They were pretty healthy, ready to go. I think so. Uh, you know, nothing nothing out of the ordinary that's uh, you know, that's any different than last week. Have you seen the, the wide receiver group kind of step up? You talked about really challenging them to, you know, guys to step forward. How they kind of handled things the last couple of weeks? I think they've still been very inconsistent. <coughs> uh, I think still think that you know that group has to step up. And, uh, but you know, again, when you look at, you know, when you look at our passing game, everybody's got to step up. You know, the offensive line does. The quarterback's got to put the ball. Uh, the quarterback has got to put the ball in better places. We have to do a better job of making you know yards after the catch. Uh, which I don't think we've been very consistent in that regard at all. So I think that everybody has to up their level of, of play when it comes to our passing game, and uh, that starts with the O line and protection with them in the backs. Uh, and I think then again it goes to the accuracy of the quarterback and the receivers being able to catch balls when they get opportunities without missing big opportunities, which we've done. And uh, again, they're just you know all the way around. The receivers have to be more consistent and more productive, but uh, they're not always you know solely responsible for you know lack of production. I think it's everybody. Is this week we might see a little bit more of Mike Blakely? Uh, you know we you know we always plan on playing all the backs, and sometimes as the games unfold, you know there's reasons why you do or you don't. Uh, Mike's had a good week of practice. Well, really two good weeks, and we've got a lot of confidence in him and. He'll get his he'll get his share of time. Gene, is it some kind of uh, a team that's lost as big in two SEC games they have, and it, it, is it a focus to 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 the players that I, these guys have got a lot of good players despite that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think our guys. When you just watch the film, you can see they've got a lot of good players on their team. I mean, you know. You just go to preseason rankings and look and see where they were at. You know, you can't have that high of expectations without having very good players, you know, on both sides of the ball. Uh, I think everybody talks about their offense and, you know, uh, some, some different guys on offense that are very skilled, uh, but they've got some good players on defense as, as well. So, um, you know, this team's got good players. Don't, you know, don't think they don't. Our players know that. Our guys know that. All you got to do is watch the film.
do you have any corners right now that you look at and say like that guy can definitely you know take on a Kobe Hamilton or do any of them you know, have that mentality themselves? Well, I think that you know we have several guys that have that mentality that you know they're going to accept the challenge and they know it's a big challenge. Uh, that's part that's part of what being a defensive back is. You know, being able to look at a guy like Kobe Hamilton, understanding how productive and good he's been uh, in big games, and you know accepting the challenge of trying to stop. Him. And so. Uh, but again, that isn't collectively, you know, on the corners. It starts with your D-line and, you know, what kind of pressure you can get on the quarterback. Uh, but it is a challenge for our guys. I think they understand the challenge. And again, they're looking at an NFL receiver. And uh, I think it's a great, uh, you know, it'll be a great competition out there for our guys, whoever lines up, you know, across from them. Understandable that you're probably going to look to double team in certain circumstances with that, but with how they play with as many wide receivers they're going to put out there, are you confident that they're putting some of these guys on an island with him in certain circumstances? Well, I think you you know that's that's always a possibility. Uh, you know, you have to understand the risk rewards for that. You know, and, and um, uh, we're certainly willing to do it. Uh, you have to obviously pick and choose your battles when you do that. And you know, again. You know, they'll get the ball out of their hands quick and just throw it up to him on, you know, on a fade, you know, if you're in press coverage. Or just, you know, again, send him deep whether you're in press or not and throw the ball up to him and let him try to out-jump you. So, and he's done that. Uh, but, you know, again, you got you can't do that all night. We know that. But, uh, you know, there'll be different coverages in there, you know, for him. Last week you guys played a lot of hands on defense in the first three games. Is that something you'd like to continue to do? A lot of what, Mark? A lot of yeah, on defense, you play a lot of rotation. Yeah, um, yeah, we would. Does it matter what type of offense you're playing? Um, you know, we'd like to be able to rotate people in. Uh, you know, I think a lot of that has to do also with how the flow of the game is. You know, um, the, obviously, the more bodies you can play, uh, depending on the position, the fresher you're going to be uh, as the game goes on. And uh, you know, we always have that in mind. You know, before the game even starts. Uh, but then again, you know, you have to really look at the situations in the game. And, you know, you always want your best guys on the field. Uh, but being able to play, you know, more than one guy at a position, uh, particularly in the early games when sometimes we were playing 90 plays, I think, you, you know, you've got to be able to build that depth. So, yeah, we would like to be able to play enough guys that you can consider to be have several starters. So we will continue to do that, but as far as how much time they get, really depends on how the game unfolds. James, is Clint still the backup? Mm -hmm. Then why is Jonathan listed as a four on the depth chart? Well, right? just because he's kind of started mixing there some in situations. Yeah, how, valuable, how valuable is it? And there was a game like. Saturday where Ole Miss took lead on Alabama, then Alabama ran the kickoff back. How valuable is it to have a guy like you got that almost every time you can say, if you say, go get a touchback, you can go get a touchback on a kickoff? Uh, are you talking about with Ontario and our kickoff for two No, I'm talking with Cody Parkey to be able to be able to just to 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 be able to just get a touchback. Start that's what you want. Yeah, uh, it's very it's very. Uh, you know that that's a great that's a, a very big positive for you for your special teams units. Um, you know it's a luxury that we feel like we've got, and uh, you know again we've we've pick and chosen different times not to, uh, so it's a luxury for him to be able to kick the ball where we want it to and get some good coverage down there too. But to be able to have the luxury to do that uh, with him pretty much any time we want, uh, that's big. All right, guys. Thanks, Gene.